Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2014 League of Legends World Championship. We're kicking off our group stage with a hotly anticipated matchup where China's Edward Gaming faces Korea's Samsung White. These are far and away the two favorite teams in the group, and Edward Gaming is LPL's number one seed after they took the spring and summer split and won the regional final. They are considered to be a super team with an origin story that's not unlike the European LCS Team Alliance. I would also say they play like a non-stereotypical Chinese team. I think they're very intelligent about the way they play. And I'd like to ask Monte Cristo your thoughts and opinion on Edward Gaming. Uh, yeah, they, they really play a lot more like the Korean teams. I know a lot of the Chinese analysts like to call them Baby Blue in reference to Samsung Blue's kind of positional focused AD carry where they have deft. The emphasis on kind of a slow build up and then ending the game with impressive team fighting skills. So they're a lot different than the more skirmish oriented playmaking style of a team like Starhorn Royal Club. So there's a lot of diversity now in strategy in the Chinese scene that we're seeing. And honestly, I still think, though, that Samsung White has a bit of an edge here because I think they match everywhere so darn well. Now, the one thing Edward does have, though, is Name, an incredibly strong AD carry, and him and FCZF are going to do whatever they can in the duo lane. But I really, really want to see how that matches up against Imp and Mata because those guys are incredible as well. If Edward wins, Name goes off. Whether Name plays an aggressive early game laner to bully or he gets sniper fed on someone like Kog'Ma, we have to see. Yeah, we will find it. I'm happy you bring up Samsung White. They, of course, the number two seed from Korea. We keep saying this. We will continue saying it. Many view them as the strongest team in their region. This is the second trip to Worlds. Last year they played as uh, Samsung Ozone, but they have made a notable change. It is a new mid laner, and they appear to be significantly stronger than last year. Yeah, Pawn is a very solid mid lane player, and I think that this roster swap, uh, one of the coaches said in an interview a while back that switching Pawn and Dade, the intention was to get both teams to Worlds. Uh, he was a little bit of a more rookie player at the time, and so he kind of fell in line behind the shot calling from Dandy and Mata, the more playmaking players, whereas Dade fit very nicely into Blue as a playmaking mid laner, and that kind of gave Blue the spark they needed to be successful. Yeah, and of course, we're going to talk about the jungle. Dandy, uh, probably the strongest jungler here at the tournament. Crumbs, as a jungler yourself, talk to me about what your thoughts on the player. Now, Dandy has been in the scene for quite a while, and he's been consistent all throughout. He's been playing Lee Sin, Evelyn, and Lee, all the meta champions for a while, and Korea is one of the few regions that's able to bring out Rengar as well. So he's got in his, that in his champion pool, and he's the only player in the entire world that's still playing Evelyn after she got nerfed, which adds quite a bit of a surprise factor. I just want to see how you or Unstoppable uh, holds up against Pawn because I don't think I think that matchup is going to be very slanted and uh, as Crumb said, Dandy, if it's not already slanted, then Dandy will slant it for them. And then in the bot lane, yeah, sure, Nami is a really good AD carry, but Mata is just uh, complete ranks above SCZF, so it's going to be really tough for EDG to just outmatch uh, their enemies because in roll for roll or, or lane for lane at least, they're at least tied if not better. I do think we are underselling clear level a little bit, though. He has incredibly high kill participation. He actually ganks incredibly well. And I know Dandy's a player who likes to get in his opponent's head and try to understand what his opponent is going to do. Maybe that happens here, but I don't want to count out clear level. I think he can also get his lanes going and get that early game that I think Edward needs to get here. Well, I like the fact we've got a little bit of differing opinions on the players. Let's see if it actually shows true in the predictions. Wouldn't be an analyst desk without that prediction game. So I'm going to be putting these guys on the spot, and I want to know legitimately who you think will be winning this matchup. Let's run this one down the line. Crepo, who's going away with the W? Yeah, pretty much what I said already, like White's gonna win this, I think, lane for lane, as I said before, they just, they're gonna outclass their opponents, and then even in terms of just macro level strategy, their vision control will be better, um, Edward Kamen's had decent vision control, but, I mean, White is just, yeah, it's White, you know, they're gonna win this. Crumbs? I think White is gonna win it as well, you know, when it comes to the methodical Korean playstyle, compared to a little bit more chaotic, even though EDG is not that chaotic, to the chaotic Chinese style, I pick the brain over the brong. <laughs> Yeah. Or the bra. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Monte Cristo. How do I follow that up? No, I I got to go with uh, Samsung White as well. I do think EDG is a very strong team. And because if both teams make it out, they'll be placed on opposite sides of the bracket. We're looking at a possible preview of the World Finals here as well, it, potentially. 
Well, we'll find out. Freak, final thoughts. So I definitely think Samsung Samsung White is going to win this game. Uh, I agree with kind of all the comments here where they seem to be a little bit better everywhere. But sometimes the X Factor comes in, and you know Edward could make that play. But yes, down the line, I think Samsung White is better strategically and a little bit better in every single role. Well, you guys at home have heard what our analysts are picking. Let's see who you chose to come away with a victory in this first game. Over on lolesports.com, 80% of you say that Samsung White will take the first win. It's a heavy favorites for sure. Now, despite the fact Aero Gaming is heading into world as the number one team from China, they are their own biggest critics as they prepare for the competition. <laughs> Zero 然后打赢了 训练的话，因为韩服之前的版本比国服快嘛，现在国服也跟上了嘛，然后就会先去研究一些视频和必须的顺序和选择，然后再根据队伍队员的打法和性格，对我的风格，然后筛选一些英雄和一些打法的元素
Thank you very much, Trevor. And let's check out the starting lineups as we get right into this match. I think we're all ready here. We've been waiting an entire season to get to this. On the blue side, it's LPL's Edward Gaming. In the top lane, it is Koro. Jungling is going to be Clear Love. In mid, it's you for Unstoppable. AD Carry is Name, and supporting him is FZZF. And over on the red side, representing Korea as the champions, it is, of course, Samsung White. In the top lane, making a return is Looper. Dandy is in the jungle. Pawn in the mid lane. Imp is the AD carry and Mata on support. And the biggest thing that I noticed when prepping for these two teams is how they don't actually share very similar champion pools. They're actually much different than many teams here. The jungle in particular, Jarvan the Four for Clear Love is actually by far and away his most picked. Obviously the Rengar is a shared pick because it was banned heavily against EDG and it's the main pick for Danny. But outside of that, the other roles don't have many overlapping champions as well as far as their main roles. Yeah, and speaking of bans, of course, you gotta look towards EDG. Banned Yasuo 31 yeah. times throughout the summer and the playoffs. Of course, that is against yeah. a lot of Chinese mid laners. Yasuo is a big threat there. Pawn, not so much. Exactly. It's kind of the wrong Samsung if you're looking for a Yasuo player. Pawn and you are actually two players that are completely versatile in the champions they pick, but they will still trend towards more passive mid laners. Pawn, because he generally just waits for Dandy to set things up and you because he's just a passive player and that's EDG's <laughs> strategy. But of course, yet again. Obviously, the Yasuo getting taken out. EDG liking to play that slow game, so they don't want any Yasuos jumping in on their own engages. And something we should talk about, obviously, is a big thing, the Twitch ban in there. AD carries, you know, we talked about Name versus Imp. Of course, we heard Monte Cristo talking about it in the preview show. This is a big, big battle. We've got yeah. to see which one they're going to go with here. Where's the Alistair in the Maokai ban? Is what I'm wondering, because we were thinking that White was probably going to ban those away to keep them away from Coral. Coral doesn't actually play those champions very frequently, at least the Alistair, but that's because it's banned all the time. Right. They actually ban it themselves. So good scouting by White there, seeing that Coral and FCZF aren't going to be playing the Alistair, but still, that was a little dicey. If we do see the Maokai come through, and I think it may well be first pick, it could be an AD carry first pick, but he has got Jana five ben. wins on it. Jana, of wow. course, FCZF did play that throughout the uh, playoffs, and there is the Instalock Maokai. Five games, five wins for Koro. Yeah. We'll see how it works out for him. Absolutely undefeated. But they're trading picks in that sense. I guess there's so much Whoa. up right now. Remember, there's a Twitch ban. Kogma is still available. I'd expect EDG to take it on this rotation. Zillion is a super, super, super high tier pick for certain teams. And I guess White was able to lock that down. Looking at that pickup, Clear Love loving Kha'Zix. Dandy takes that right away. It's gonna be a great pickup for him. Versatile pick as well, because we don't know whether yeah. that's a support or mid lane Zillion. We could see it on Pawn. It has been rising to the prominence, but Name going for it in the bottom lane. It is gonna be that Lucian. We thought that may be one of the primary picks for the AD carries, and of course, Looks like he's going to be responding with a Tristan. Yeah, this has blown me away a little bit. Obviously, these are still high tier picks, but I was expecting a Kogma from EDG. Lucian is very much Whoa. more about winning the lanes here. And so, all right. All right, Let's that do changes it. everything. This changes many things. It's not something Looper has, been, has played, but it's something he has been training. It's something that yes. has been coming up huge, especially in Korean solo queue. You see a ton of Rumble playing around. As far as the lane matchup goes, he can't touch a Maokai. He casts so many spells just to keep his overheat going. The Maokai is <laughs> going to be healing like crazy. But as far as team fight damage goes, it is absolutely off the charts. And that's exactly what Samsung White loves to do. Get into those team fights. They're going to have to try and get past the Oriano. We're going to see a lot of that throughout World. It's going to be picked up by Unstoppable this time in the mid lane. And that Jarvan pickup still coming through for EDG. Yeah, absolutely. You talked about it yeah. at the start. It is something that he's very comfortable on Clear Love, of course. This is the return to the World Championship for Clear Love is here in Season 2. But it does look like it is going to be, well, Nami. We expected wow. to see it a lot earlier in the picks and bans. It's yep. got snuck through all the way to the end for Mata. Yeah, well, one interesting thing is the team with Nami doesn't play Nami very frequently. <laughs> they usually let the other team get it every time. It would not surprise oh, me if we were able to see the Nami on the other side right here. It fits in well with counter gauge, which is what you want against a team like EDG. Even though EDG is a slower, more methodical Chinese team, they still turn it on. When they have Maokai and Jarvan, they're very much about an all-in engage. And if they're running that into a tidal wave, plus an equalizer from Rumble, it is a whole bunch of pain. 
great counter coming out from that Samsung White, as you say, within those fights. And EDG, number one team coming out of China, only brought up in February, have pretty much combined a super team, if you will, and have gotten themselves here now to face what people think is the number one team in the world right now. This is going to be an amazing matchup. Yeah, I mean, of course, if viewers that are watching and are not sure of about the Chinese scene, but just basically think of EDG as the alliance that came together back yeah. in the start of the spring and suddenly won everything. Of course, Alliance didn't quite do that in the spring. <laughs> but nevertheless, they have been dominant. They've dominated the Chinese scene. It is, a, This is an official proper challenge to Samsung White. Samsung White is the team that everybody, honestly, in this tournament perceives as the best team entering, yeah. despite the fact they are the number two seed for Korea. Yeah, but it's for good reason. Mm. Everyone fears them because they play against them in scrims, and they're really the team that doesn't have a major weakness. You can see that with their pick and ban, they can adapt to almost any situation, and here they're going for a lot of counter engage. Well, let's see if EDG can find weakness on them in the late game as the players load into this one. Let's, let, let's, let's think how, or see how you are voting on this first match of the World Championship. Tweet EDG win or SS win to at LOL Esports. We will be checking in to see where the fan vote stands shortly. Mouthful of words. <laughs> yeah. and of course, you can see. This is one thing I wanted to notice, actually, going back to the picks, is yeah. Dandy. Dandy on Kha'Zix. It's a champion. Yeah. He only played once throughout the uh, summer of, of the champions. It's definitely a takeaway. But it used to be Rengar. Rengar was on the table. Yeah, we do have to remember, obviously, that it's been a long time since we've seen these guys play. Yeah. Rengar is not the same power he was, and Kha'Zix is much more popular. All right, gentlemen, we are on to the Rift. This is what everybody has been waiting for. And from Group A, we get the top two teams to start off the World Championship group stage. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. EDG starting out, of course, as the blue team. This is a round-robin group phase. Group A, Group B, Group C, and Group D, of course, will be played over in Singapore. It's all about A and B right now. They will play each other twice, but that will be in three days' time. EDG will face the final match, actually, here in Taipei. Well, they'll face Samsung White. This is really a big tell. We talked about it, obviously, Monte Cristo and the crew on the analyst deck talked about it. This is a potential final. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. These teams are both incredibly strong. EDG as well. Whether or not they're telling the truth, they said that they're not really preparing for Samsung White in the group stage because they are confident in their ability to make it out regardless and are getting a head start on preparing for their semi-final or quarter-final opponents. That's how confident they are in getting out of group. But uh, yeah, this opening right now is fairly passive from both sides. Nobody wants to give up that first leg. No advantage to either team here as we start. Looking at a little bit of the inventories, normal there as well. So it looks like no tricks up the sleeves here, D-Man. So I want to get into the Rumble. The Rumble in the top lane, he's obviously up against the Maokai. Maokai's been incredibly strong. We did see SK Telecom pull out Rumble once throughout the uh, qualifiers. Of course, it was the one game they won, was very successful, and of course, used to be a champion heavily played in Korea back in Season 3. Absolutely. But it's been a long time since we saw this. I mean, if we even think game. back to the All-Star game in 2013, we saw PDD's Rumble absolutely oh. wrecking that tournament. Yeah. It's not like anyone is shy for Rumble, it's just that he's been gone for quite a long time from the competitive scene, and a player like Looper commanding Rumble actually makes me think he's more of just trying to withstand the lane, obviously make teleport plays, but he's there to counter EDG's playstyle as much as possible and make it difficult to be dived upon in team fights. And those teleport plays are what brought Looper into the scene last year at Worlds. And if you think about the long range of Equalizer, even if he's late on these teleports, he's still going to be able to participate. It's going to be such an amazing world. This is such a great first game because remember, the Samsung White team has four out of five returning members from Samsung Ozone, and those guys didn't make it out of group stage. So this is a big moment for them, and they are not going to underestimate or underperform in this group stage by their own admission. Speaking of big moments, the bottom lane. That is really what the focus is, especially for Edward Gaming. Name has to get going. He is the man that will keep the team rolling and up against Impa Mata, this is really a big test. It is a absolutely massive test because that is the lane that if it doesn't go well, every other lane is supposed to lose for EDG based on the scouting report. It's because Dandy is famed for his jungle routes and his gank paths. However, he actually got spotted out by a ward here, so he is vulnerable to a clear love collapse or counter gank here. That's what they're trying to set up. Yeah, clear love definitely ready for that one. As we look back to the bottom lane here, we we're talking a little bit about Samsung when they were Ozone, mentioning that very overconfident last year, and Imp is quoted mm. being saying, that's not going to happen again. 
Well, as far as bottom lanes go, Imp and Mata are the most aggressive 2v2 bottom lane pretty much in Korea. And Name isn't actually an incredibly aggressive AD carry. If you compared him with an Uzi from Starhorn Royal Club, he is nowhere near the same level of aggression, but above and beyond in consistency. Well, going along with well, how all the way around generally play, you've got to wonder, you know, with the Lucian in there, how it's going to handle in the late game. Of course, we know Tristan is going to be strong. He's going to get out of this one fairly straightforward, just quickly. Defensive balls. Meanwhile, oh. down the bottom, the hook is straight in. Imp could be going down. And nope. Actually, they're going to turn away. Nami took a lot of early damage there, actually, and Imp was totally safe. It was a completely one trade by White right there. Still a full mana pool on Nami and able to sustain up. That harass on Nami is going to stick. And we actually saw Dandy there, a jungler to prep his ganks quite a bit, and he even wanted a return on that lane, went all the way around. Yeah, I was actually a little bit surprised there that he put so much investment into that gank and then to not even get a positive result. EDG has actually done a very good job so far to withstand Dandy's presence so far, uh, especially you in the mid lane, out farming despite about a minute of time being spent by Dandy, both on one side of the mid lane and the other. Speaking of pressure, we do see Koro going back. He's gone for a second Thorin's Ring, so not going to be getting in towards that Rod of Ages as quick as I feel it like. It is going to delay his build for a while, but a lot of Pink Ward starting to pop in here. Potentially, we could be seeing EDG making, maybe making a play for Dragon in a few minutes. They are a slow team, but they're not afraid to make moves. Definitely able to go for these early game objectives. Yeah, one of the biggest questions that I had coming into this one was whether EDG could enter into a team fight phase without being terribly far behind. Something that Samsung White does in their victories, especially in Korea, is they absolutely demolish people. Actually, in victories, they average 15 more kills than their opponent, which is the highest mark of every team in Champions, including playoffs. They demolish people when they're getting ahead, and that always starts in the laning phase. So EDG, with a slightly slower style, is doing well to be even in gold here at six minutes. See what they can do to build around Name. Usually EDG's focus throughout these games. He'll be able to stay on the backside here as they now get a bit of aggression towards their side of the lane. Clear Love not going to get anything out of this just yet. Junglers staying on par with each other as the pink wards come out early. And we're going to see that haunting guy still for Rumble. Honestly, I am very impressed so far with EDG's vision control here. They're actually the team that's had more pertinent wards up on the map, and it may be restricting Samsung White's ability here. Obviously, Dandy was caught by that ward early on. There were multiple pink wards and sweepers bought early for EDG, and they're setting themselves up for some nice plays here. Yeah, nice hook. Death Sentence onto him. Didn't really come too much of it, though, and they're just pressuring them onto the tower right now. Of course, we also saw in that mid lane, you was pressuring Pawn. Pawn going back to buy, making his first trip back, comes out with that tier of the Goddess. Necrotron Cloak as well. He's going to make his first back as well. Expect to see probably the buildings of an Athens and Holy Grail on there. There you go. Chalice comes popping in. And we'll see how it builds from there. Big advantage in terms of CS already, though. And this is huge for Dandy. Level 6 to a level 4 clear love right now. He can already start tearing people's faces off, as we heard in the Black Nola patches. This game actually Ooh. sets up for a very dangerous dragon fight if Samsung White wants to force it. Rumble, Zilli, and Kha'Zix all at level 6 have much more powerful power spikes than you will get from EDG's side. However, they're still not really forcing those things. Just check out the ward coverage from Samsung White. Nothing in that dragon area. And if I know one thing about watching Korean teams, they almost always ward before they look to set up a play. So as they move wards into dragon is when we can expect them to start respecting it as an actual objective to take right now. That pink ward could be the beginning. Yeah, that blue buff, it looks like it's going to be taken and given to you. We saw Danny making a slight move there. He's also heading up towards the top. Looper under a little bit of pressure here. Koro feeling confident, trying to delay him as long as he can here. Danny going to make his move, this is but this bad. is very, very low. Koro's going to flash away from this one. Looper's going to keep on chasing. Looks like he should be able to get away if they can lock him up. Pawn comes steaming in. They're hey, going to lock on towards him. This could be the first blood of the world championships. Danny pounces in, and there it is. Wow. The jungler takes it. Even though they get the first blood, that is a massive investment demand right there. EG, because there's no ward covered as well from Samsung White, you can tell they did not care about that as an objective. And it is basically a trade. First blood be damned. Dandy gets himself some good gold on that kill, but EDG is picking up a lot. And now to deny blue as well. Not going to hurt Pond too much, but they are going to go ahead and do the same. Both teams having the inkling 
to keep themselves in this one. Ooh, dandy actually, very important thing right there. Ooh. Accidentally took the red buff, the blue buff with his red. Oh, FC's oh, the very caught out here. Nami trying to do what he can and put up a shield for his teammate with damage. And Nami's able to force them off as he grabs the calling just in time. Wow, great teleport cancel there at the last second by Looper. If he actually went in on that one, he would have been in the hole he blowed of trouble because EDG was collapsing very well. Another thing about these teams that they do spectacularly well is make every skirmish into a team fight because they're almost immediately collapsing anytime somebody is in danger. Koro sneaking through unseen in that top half of the jungle. Will get himself a ward down on the red ball. Back down the bottom. Explosive wow. damage back and forth. Now, mate, taking a big oh! blow. Death Center just lands on towards him. The wave comes riding through along with the Aqua Prison on Nami. Taking very low. Has to back away from this one. Mana bounces it. Mana gets it. Fantastic flash there. And great play from the bottom lane. If Imp and Mana win that 2v2, it is disaster for EDG. Nami took so much poke from Imp, using his ultimate preemptively, and then getting hooked was just a bait for EDG to fly in there. Name falling in lane is not expected. Very, very big. He talks a lot about confidence, and it comes from knowing that he can beat his opponents. Now, that might put a little crutch on that. He did say in his interview that Imp, of all the players at the World Championship, was the player he wanted to play against the most. Well, he just died. <laughs> he certainly did. I was about to say this game is, you know, starting off slow as you would expect in a tournament right. play because this is the very first game of the World Championship. Absolutely nobody wants to lose that game. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to have SKTSM. That's going to be a tense affair coming up after this one. But right now, this is, you know, this is the big, big game. Who could get that number one seed? Who will they face should they reach the playoffs? Because if you were to look at this group, these are by far the strongest teams in it. Yep. Yeah. And that number one seed is very important. But Things are definitely heating up right now. You can see still very even in gold, despite the first dragon going to EDG. I can also tell that EDG has definitely tried to change their play style against White here. Danny jumping in for Koro. Uh-oh, there's the equalizer going down. Koro's got a red carpet, but he's going to stay for the party on this one. And it's a level 8 to an 8 and a 9, and it's not going to be enough. Koro goes down. Dandy's patience paying off once again. He waited in that brush for so long, and they're going to start making a camp out of Koro. They are really trying to get Looper fed. If that rumble gets going, there will be no slowing him down. Well, good prediction getting that ward down in the bush. Finds himself Javan the fourth, ready and waiting in the form of Clearlove. Invade from Dandy once yeah. again. They know that Clearlove's down the bottom. Go straight in, take the jungle. And here's the big thing that's actually been keeping EDG close in overall gold, uh, but is not normally EDG's play style. Clearlove right now has 33 CS to Dandy's 52 and he actually hasn't even ganked that much. Kurlev has spent so much time walking around the map, trying to scout, placing down wards, and really just trying to keep up with Dandy. He's never made his own plays, and he also hasn't farmed that much. Kurlev typically farms a whole bunch before setting up ganks. He will be really weak in these upcoming team fights based on how much scouting he's tried to do. Well, we saw EDG switch to sweepers so fast. We see that Samsung White now has all of theirs, but he has just been going around trying to clear things out and not getting anything after because Samsung White, as Mata has proven before, just is a god of vision towards the mid game. Currently, you can see just looking across the map, we talked about the vision. Yep. It is very much covered both angles. Both teams all got their coverage. Of course, EDG with a lot of pinks down the bottom. They did have them down there for that dragon earlier on. One was just swept out by Mana in there. Koro taking a lot of damage. This may be a straight up one-on-one -on -one right now. Looper fancies this one. His ultimate is available if he wants to pop that equalizer down. Koro already used it. Blocks him off perfectly. Koro in trouble. Looper overheated. Oh. He doesn't have enough to finish it. And Koro gets away. By the hair on his chinny chin chin. That was ridiculous by Looper right there with the cutoff. Maybe if he placed that equalizer a little bit farther back, it would have uh -oh. been fine. Whoa, that's aggressive. Oh, they, oh, he's going to be walking past the dark oh, path. Whoa. That's a hit from him. Big damage coming out here. If he can actually get that blessing. Oh, the bubble goes down from Mata. They get him in, and it's going to be more trouble. FCZF is taking shots, and Imp's even going to get the reset on the tank to get out. Clear looks only here to watch. This game may be getting out of hand right here. Imp jumping over. Over the wall right there with Trist. Obviously, Nama hadn't hit his Infinity Edge yet, but you can tell they have just sensed an opening in top lane, in bottom lane, and they're really trying to take some advantage now. Definitely getting the kills, that's for sure. That gives them that 2,000 gold advantage in the first tower of the game. Will go down to Samsung White. Im leaps back away and goes to spend a chunk of that gold. One of the only problems, I would say, 
is Manos the one that's getting the kills. Hey, let's see this again. Yeah, they thought Imp had gone back to base or just had not returned to base yet, which is one of the reasons FCZF was not in position for that lantern. If he would have been farther back, they could have uh -oh. done that. Oh, oh, oh mid-team fight. The ball goes down. Shockwave's still up as they try to put it in. Oh, it's going to get a miss on that one as Dandy gets himself out quickly with the flash. But the Dark Passage brings it back in range, and everybody's going to get a piece of that one. The double kill coming in for Unstoppable. And they're Whoa. looking for Looper. That is a big turnaround for EDG right there. Not sure exactly how that happened, but getting their first two kills on the board nearly 14 minutes into the game. It took them a while, but now they can even this game right up. One more time on that. Yeah, I mean, this was just Dandy and Pawn getting a little over zealous right there. Pawn CC lock, so he couldn't use his chrono ship. At that point, Samsung White just has to bail. Great presence of mind there by FCZF to finish that one off with a flash. First tower of the game going down for EDG, started to turn some of their own pressure back onto Samsung White. You can tell these teams, despite what EGG said, have very much prepared for one another. EDG now in the form of three, four members all heading north. Looper's hanging around with the equalizer. That is a this bait. is a problem, because now they and FCZF come around the side. Koro takes a lot of tower hits, but it does not matter as EDG collapse on the top lane. They will take the tower as well. It's another one of these dragon trades, though, right there. Samsung White was planning for the dragon. That's where their wards moved. They moved them down to the bottom lane, meaning they fell in the top lane. It exposed Looper. He was overconfident in lane. He's typically a passive laner trying to push his advantage, and he gets baited. That is what has been amazing me. A not trade-focused Looper going absolutely crazy in these fights. Samsung also, with that last two deaths they took, Trying to walk into a very dark jungle, not like them. I think they're getting a little ahead of themselves. And even though Samsung White is winning this game, that was what most people expected, everything else in this game has been unexpected. <laughs> EDG has had very good vision control, sometimes sneaking through the wards of Samsung White. Imp and Mata are destroying Name and FCZF, despite Name being known and touted by many as the best AD carry in the world. They've been getting outplayed 2v2. That's not just Imp, it's because Mata is also the best support in the world by a lot of people's ratings. And it's also crazy here that Pawn is struggling a little bit on Zillion. Oriana has had her way with Zill, and you may become unstoppable this game. Oh, Dandy spotted out FCZF there. Push in there, the hook does not quite land. Are they going to time that blue buff spawn? Remember, they did take it away from them last time around. I expect it to be coming up. They've come down to the dragon. They realize it is not there. And it is, of course, that blue buff was taken away by Pawn. So EDG a little bit off in their time in there. They tried to push out and make a play. It has left them exposed in the mid lane. We do see Name taking that turret, but look at Samsung White. They have grouped heavily to push them in. It's incredibly difficult for EDG to get in position to stop this one. They're getting trapped and cut off. This turret's going down. It has to be going down. They have so much Ooh. disengage, even if EDG tries to get into this one. Samsung opens up the map a little bit more. Might start to push that advantage. They have good items coming out in those spikes we were talking about on both sides as the AD carries as well get the, those items finished. EDG grouping in the mid lane right now, trying to react a little bit slow, maybe going to try and force down the inner, but you can see the Imp is off in the top lane, and this actually may be EDG's advantage. Instead, they're going to collapse around. Look at them. They're trying to collapse across him, but the moment he's off in the top lane, trying to push that tower down, he's realized the danger now. He's backing off, and I think he should be safe. This is a period in the game where so much is up in the air, with so many turrets down. Vision control is incredible. Dragon's not up right now, so really, the freedom that these teams have is unmatched in any portion of the game. One thing that Clear Love is focusing on right now, I think a little bit too much actually, is vision, vision control. He was already a little under farmed on Jarvan. He went an offensive first item, and he's followed that up with a sight stone. He's gonna be a piece of paper in these team fights. Zillion bombs, Rumble ultimates and a Trist are going to melt Clear Love and make him ineffective come late game. And now they leave Imp in the top lane, already quite ahead of pretty much anybody as an AD carry right now, easily to farm up against Koro. Not going to be a problem there. And Dandy, he's, he can, like, Clear Love cannot catch him without boots. He's got Mobies now, and he just bought the Hex Drinker. Crazy build from him, evolving the wings, and he's ready to get into even more fights with the team. Mata beginning his vision control around the map. We'll see what EDG can do to stop this. 2K gold lead. Imp still laying in wait, and the rest of Samsung White also moving up there, jumping straight into it. But you can see the lantern ready and waiting. But five members of Samsung White are all making their way up on towards his top lane, and EDG are a little slow to react to this. Name still down the bottom. I think this tower is yeah. going to go. This is Samsung White's play, just a better rotation. They even out the turrets and they extend their lead. 
with Samsung White being so far ahead. EG, EDG is not going to get there. Play safe in lane, wait for a Baron, win game. It's not going to be that easy. Against a fully magic penned up looper on Rumble right now, and a soon to be full item pawn with the Athenians and Holy Grail and his tier. That zillion has reached a peak in power. Uh, if he could just pick up some more cooldown reduction, that's all he would need. It's a very dangerous point of the game for EDG right here. You're talking about Samsung a little bit in their vision. It looks like they've placed those pink wards a little deeper on both sides. Maybe getting ready to push their advantage a bit more. They do have two minutes on Dragon. Clear Love still trying to clear out as many wards. They have so many in such a close position, and it's not really providing them anything just yet. You know, it seems to me right now, EDG, they want to fight. They're looking for that fight, mm -hmm. but... Samsung White is just avoiding them, happily to push those objectives. You can see EDG all grouping up the mid, trying to make something out of the jungle of Samsung White. I'm not sure this is the territory they want to be pushing, though. Yeah, even though EDG is a slower team, when it's go time, they're very willing to go. Samsung White is actually pretty similar in that regard. They're ready to brawl, but mainly they want to either catch EDG without members or they want to catch EDG over diving, which is something they're definitely prone to doing since they have no answer to Imp's split push. The instant they see Imp split pushing, I'd expect EDG to try and find a fight, but because of the immense vision control from White, that is really hard to do. Dragon's up in one minute, and the vision battle has already begun. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of wards falling left and right. Pawn taking a lot of damage in the mid lane. Name and the rest of ADG collapsing in towards that middle turret. And that inner will go down. You can see just off of the side, though, Samsung White ready to come in from the side. Are they going to be able to react? Are they going to go for it? Because EDG, they could keep pushing. Right now, EDG has the ward control in the places that matter, but White is just doing their best to counter that with the split push, trying to take them away from their points of power. Fast static shiv on the amp allows him to get here. He should be able to take that down with the well, next wave to come, but he is going to have a party here soon. Three is definitely going to be a crowd on this one, and it looks like he will get a bit of help from Looper and the rest of the team to cut off that oh, advantage. That's... Catch! That Aqua Prison was crucial, but the Lantern followed through. EDG get out of dodge, and that was quick reactions. Dragon, though, is about to spawn in 10 yeah. seconds, and that will give Samsung White the advantage. Equalizer down, but also half of Yu's health bar. White is still respecting that play a fair bit, though. They don't actually know that everyone on EDG is recalled. They need to get that Dragon down quickly. Otherwise, a bunch of full health EDG members will come back without the ultimates of Samsung White. It's smart of them to go now. Trying to make that full team play down onto Imp, and it cost them the Dragon. Samsung White able to see what was happening with all the vision they still had up in the jungle. Somehow, after EDG clearing everything out to the max. Two to three of Dragons in the game, so EDG has been able to get back somewhat but I don't know if it's going to be enough right now. That middle turret definitely helps quite a bit, though. So the battle for wards is clearly about to begin. Obviously, there's a lot cleared out in that last moment. Baron is a potential, but not just yet. It's more a case of getting some vision down. So let's start taking a little bit of stock over the items that maybe they're picking out. You can see a whole bunch of pink wards being picked up by EDG, and they're starting to start just slightly popping towards them second items. What is the big power spike? Because I can see Imp has completed that static shift and Infinity Edge. He's going to start becoming a beastly Tristana. So EDG, they need to start quickening the pace up here. Imp has hit his power spike. The first mid lane with a hit death cap could potentially equalize that power spike. They're both working towards it. Right now, despite the 3,000 gold difference, the game is actually in a fairly close place. Uh, it, it is definitely in White's favor fairly substantially, though, because of the Trist. Uh, because Clear Love is unable to get gold to create tank items, and because Coral oh. doesn't have armor yet, EDG wouldn't need a catch. But they just kind of got caught. Yeah, throwing in everything here. Whoa, Pawn's right in the middle of it. Tries to slow him down to keep it. The fight begins, and EDG is trying to get out of this one. Coral gets jumped on, but the slow is wearing off. And he's going to try to flash over the wall with the rest of his team, but they will continue with the calling. Coral in all sorts of trouble. The shot by Pawn's in Looper. Looper taken low, but so is EDG. They're backing out. Now they're going to run back on towards him. MCZ is going to get picked off. It's a double for him. Could it be a triple? Yes, it will. And that is a big, big turnaround. Samsung White that could turn just an absolutely pristine team fight there from Samsung White. They called out the bait from EDG. They poked them in the Baron pit. They slowed them down as they were trying to retreat, and they forced them into a bad play. Now they're trying Baron, but it's only two defenders from EDG. Imp goes in. Whoa! Oh, that's going to be big. They get the shot back from the Buster. Imp wants to go down on oh. this one, and he does. Up the double kill, one for each, and Imp's gonna jump in to see if he can clean up this mid wave and get that mid turret down as well. They are moving as a 
perfect team right now. Everything's happening in their favor, and people are getting away with slivers of health. The game just completely broke wide open. Samsung White is now dominating. They had the Infinity Edge. There was no death caps answered on the other side. The fear of Clear Love and Coro being too far behind was absolutely valid right there. Imp shredded through them. The zillion power spike here, level 13 with a lot of spells, just everything going Samsung White's way. Obviously, the tidal wave catching three was absolutely crucial right there. And they just couldn't run through Looper. He was going to hit him with the Flame Spitter, so they had to split up. Here, EDG in classic fashion tries for a turn, but you can see they're lacking tank stats basically when they jump in. Coral was already low, no armor. Clear Love really doesn't do anything. He locked a Kha'Zix in for half a second, and that's the imp that they've been trying to keep down this whole game. When you lose the bottom lane and you have Nami on your team, EDG doesn't have really too many ways of winning the game back in that sense. There's a big, big advantage now for Samsung White, proving that number one seed that they currently hold in everybody's perspective, other than the fact that they didn't qualify as it. <laughs> they are the number two from Korea, which is a little scary in the rest of the uh, Western world's eyes, I think, and maybe even China's, because this is their number one seed falling down to Samsung White. But there's a potential for coming back, and Pawn Woo. completely caught out of position. I don't think the rest of his team are going to collapse, but let's see what advantage they take from this. They know that the rest of EDG are all down there, and immediately it goes top. There is no answer for him whatsoever. Look at his items right now. He doesn't even need a Last Whisper because there's no armor being built up by EDG. They do not have the gold to do so. Far and ahead of the game right now, Samsung White looking to take this one home. We mentioned a little bit that EDG may not have looked at them so much during practice, but still, this is a dominating performance we're seeing from White. Solid, solid play. Clearly chasing the wolf. <laughs> not quite able to uh, pick that one up like he'd wish to. So. Everything's now, giving them trouble. Where are they going to go from here? I mean, they basically had to sit back and hope that Samsung White now may have the state because it really did crack the game wide open. They've got an 8,000 gold advantage, as you mentioned. Imp, he's a, an absolute monster right now. You can see he's got a clear 2,500 gold advantage over Name, which in itself, for Tristana versus Lucian, is a gigantic problem. Yeah, and the fact that he's level 15, in small thanks to Zillion's passive, but mainly because he's been split pushing so much, uh, just makes the range discrepancy even greater between Trist and Lucian. Uh, this has been a very well-played game by Samsung White. EDG definitely threw a few curveballs at them, putting a lot more emphasis in their early game vision control, having a nice bait in the top lane for Coral that one time. But outside of that, it's really been a Samsung White-controlled game. EDG not forgetting to keep the wards up. Pinks across the inventories with the double sight stone as they continue to try and stop the snowball that Samsung Whoops. White has here. Command Shockwave pulls in Mata. He's just going to heal that one off, but all down for... Could have been a kill. And not quite farmed enough. He would have needed to right. zero Mata out with that one to make a big impact. Now they're just down Shockwave and just hemorrhaging objectives left and right. So Dandy wow. stealing away the blue buff. The Prince of Thieves, as he's nicknamed by Monty and Doa. And as you see, the vote, of course, very much in favor of Samsung White right now. It's actually less, though, because it was an 80% swing to begin with. Now it's only 67%. EDG putting up a good impression at the yeah. start, and obviously they do face yeah. each other again. There's a lot to take from this one. Koro caught out, teleport, oh. is not going to get interrupted, wow. does manage to get back to base. I mean, oh, that's another oh. one upon actually. Oh, man, he's going to go down, but the team has time to get over there. Looper may throw down the ultimate for the walkout. It's actually down already past that. And it looks like Pawn oh. gets himself enough speed up, dodges the destiny, oh. but the clockwork does wind up nicely and he goes down. Looper could be in trouble, but the rest of the team is collapsing in mid lane. Flash on towards him. He can see, as you mentioned, the team collapsing in towards him. He tries to turn it back on towards you. Oh. He gets the kill, turns around in a 3v1. A simple turnaround kill. It's great for him. If goes aggressive, actually leaps off across to the side. Not sure where he's planning to avoid dodging out of the death sentence there. Dandy comes around the side and still, Sam Samson White, despite losing two members, keep the pressure on EDG. That right there is one of the reasons they picked Rumble. He has so much latent damage, even in a 1v3, he could turn that kill right around onto you. Still a pretty good move there by EDG. They cannot contest this dragon, uh, but they're trying their best to survive right now. Very great play and an interesting orb situation coming out in Samsung White's inventory here with the two scrying orbs. They Absolutely. want to be seeing everything. Yeah, they just want to make sure nothing gets surprised on them. They know yeah. that EDG likes to group up as five, so if they catch one, they usually end up catching a whole heap of players behind them. 
to just kind of go back to the start of the game, though, and all the hype around Samsung White, the player that stood out the most here was the duo lane of Mata and Imp. I would say Dandy was, even though he's a spectacular player, not particularly spectacular this game, that bottom lane performance against the cream of the crop from EDG and China, uh, being able to get all those kills, it's been Imp and Mata this game taken over. It's hard to not let that happen. You give Mata Nami, you have sustain for Imp in that lane, and they want to go hard the whole time. We saw Nami and FCZF go hard a little bit in the beginning, but after that, they've kind of just fallen behind. Yeah, there's been domination, and if one team knows basically how to control a lead, it is Samsung White. They've been in this situation many, many times. They're not going too aggressive, they're not going crazy. They had the barrel buff, but they didn't overly commit on anything there. It has happened to them in the past, and this time they are playing it safe. Looper, is he going to get caught out? Death Sentence will land, and the rest of EDG claps. That's a lot of damage they're missing from wow. the fight. He threw the equalizer out as well, but you see how far EDG is behind. They go to clear more out. They don't go to take anything off of this. Hey, quite honestly, that was just a sloppy play by Looper. They did not have ward coverage, and it was a nice catch by FCZF. Obviously, though, Samsung White has never put all their whatever's in one basket. <laughs> you can always have a backup plan here, and it's that backup plan. And I've got to be honest, if Koro comes down here, I don't think he can do anything with him. And he's just realized that he was making a direct route. He help. And then he thought, nope, I can't handle this Tristana on my own. Name and Klilov all having to back off. But he's ripping the hell out of that tower. And on his own, single-handedly blows Koro backwards and says, thank you very much. Your tower's gone. Imp is playing with that lead about the best he could right there. Completely knowing his limits, doesn't take a, a lick of damage there, finishes off an inhibitor turret, and now, because they pulled so many defenses down bottom, it gives them time to create vision around the Baron pit. All three sweepers just used, pink wards placed as well. You know, this is a man that's clearly looking for tears. He tasted them earlier on, of course, <laughs> against Piglet, who sadly is no longer on SK Telecom. Maybe he's looking if he can see if he gets them from <laughs> Name. I don't know. This guy is maybe a little bit sadistic. Who knows? But it is Samsung White setting up, EDG looking for that fight, and they may well find it. Well, so far, been working out for Imp, known to be not as mechanically and strategically sound in fights, but everything's been 1v1 one for, one for, one for him today, and it's coming out rainbows. Samsung White has two different ways of winning this game that could easily work out. They're choosing to do the split push strategy here with Imp while trying to keep Baron control with the rest of the team, knowing there's no one who can deal with Imp. They also would win a 5v5 team fight pretty easily. So I'm surprised they actually haven't just grouped up around Baron and tried to recreate the fight that blew the game open in the first place because they weren't nearly as far ahead then as they are now. Lots of new things coming into the inventories being drank up. Pawn puts out an elixir there, which means they want that extra bit of power for what else is about to happen next and solidify that win. With the inhibitor open in the bottom, Koro's forced to stay down there right now, but the teleport is available. But Samsung White wants this. Prepping the fights, they're gonna get ready for the Baron. It maybe shows just a little bit of respect that Samsung White have for EDG, despite the fact they are 10,000 gold ahead. They're not pushing a gigantic advantage. They know that obviously with an Orianna there, it's pretty easy to clear. You've got the cool in, you can wipe out them waves. Instead, they are drawing into the Baron, which honestly they could take with ease. Yeah, and to EDG's credit, they have delayed Samsung White's execution on multiple occasions. Oh. The oh. level of catches they've had is pretty great. This looks bad though. Flag and drag out, but he's slowed on this one. He does get the shield, oh. so they know the rest of the team is close. Dandy wow. looking to go in, but he backs off. That's Jungler down, though they flash into the F1! They fall oh, to get away dear. from the Shockwave just about. That does mean it is a big ultimate down, and Samsung White, they know they can go for it. Clearlove is not in the picture. He is very low. If he comes sliding in, you can see he's charging EDG, for the base. if they care for their lives, they don't go in here. There goes the ultimate. Nami's wave is out, and they're forced to back up. Imp jumps into the fight. Koro's trying to do what he can with Maelstrom up, dodging all that damage, but it's going to be too much. The team leaves him for dead. They're just trying to do as much damage as possible so Samsung White can hopefully not finish this Baron, but Imp is just unstoppable. He hasn't taken a single hair of damage, and he'll go wherever he wants. He's going straight for it. Lilith forced away once again. Name's calling is up in a moment, but they did 
delay the Baron. Job done for EDG. They just need to sit back and wait a little bit longer. Imp sees a gigantic wave in the bottom. What a gutsy team right there to just go in again and again. Every time someone get knocked out in the fight, they uh -oh. hold off with four. The fact they only suffered one casualty is remarkable. And now White has to leave for wave management, again delaying the game for EDG. How long can they do this? Imp is gigantic. Solo pushing lanes by himself. I'm gonna guess not much longer because things are getting a little bit crazy here. Uh, Looper's incredibly strong. If they can make a super, super late game, you'd think the Zillion would fall off a little bit, but it's paired with a Trist, and the front line, despite having a Maokai, will still fall to an incredibly fed Trist. It's EDG is Ooh. delaying here. They're hoping to catch a more ridiculous fight. Speaking of catching someone out, we know this has happened in the past, and while he did say it, I'm talking about Imp here, oh, yep. says cockiness will not creep back into his game. It has done. He's a 5-0-4, massively fed Tristana. If he was the single he get caught out, he's been playing it risky so far, that could be a big yeah. turning point for EDG. He would That's have to play massive damage dealer. remarkably risky, though, because yeah. they have the Zillion as the safety net right yeah. here. Uh, they're doing this on top of Ward, but they're doing it so quickly that I don't know if EDG can make it in. They're going to go for it, though. Nami's got a pretty good item build to start shredding in here. The calling goes out to start Koro again in the front, but they were not uh -oh. able to stall it this time, and the fight continues just below Baron. They got him down! They got him down! That is a big turnaround, but can they have the damage back on this one? Pawn is still alive. They need to get that mid laner down. Uses the ultimate on itself. He's About, they can turn the fight. What a spectacular team fight right there by EDG. Down 10,000 gold and a Baron buff, and they can get this. One more time. How did this happen? Oh first off, you never see White do Baron on top of a ward. That's the first unexpected thing. Then, Rumblewald gets almost nothing. Imp loses his oh. mind, gets crushed oh. in the CC, and dropped before the Zillion all can land. Exactly the scenario we thought could never happen. They then catch Looper in Zonyas. The fact that he was able to escape with a sliver of health is a bit of a miracle. That was nearly a clear ace. Baron is gone from three people. It's only on Dandy and Looper, and EDG shows they will not ever go down without many fights. Looks like we got a lot of people still holding their breath because EDG just made a huge play. Only, I believe, Looper and one other comes out of Baron with that. Dandy here comes out of Baron with that one. Where can they use it? There's still, yes, a huge push to come out from Imp. That mistake probably won't be made I once more. I can't believe that happened. The one thing that could spell a turnaround for White, and he Crazy. rocket jumps in with no backup when Zillion's not in range. That is the definition of what he said he wasn't going to do. <laughs> that was complete uh -oh. overconfidence right there by Imp, and a great capitalization by EDG. Well, White don't look like they want to hang around this time. They're making the play. They're going to push down towards that exposed inhibitor, and mm. EDG are not in position to deal with this one if they were to go fast for it. They see the rumble. They see Looper making that move, so they are going to react. They are going to be in position. Name, he's got big off that last he's fight. Huge. He's got yeah. the items. And this actually will be much closer now for Samsung White. Imp also has a lot of items, and Samsung White needs to be very careful not to give in to the chaos. EDG is one team, they're, they're used to playing against a lot of teams that will make judgment calls with limited vision control. Right now, White is trying to set up a retreat, they're trying to control the initiation, they're going to ward up and try and play as a cohesive unit. If they don't do that, they will get drawn into the chaos where EDG thrives. Well, currently, they have to delay. Imp's flash not available. Bonds is, of course, if that shockwave were to catch on him. If he didn't jump at the exact moment, it would be curtains. They are going to back away. And Samsung White, again, playing very respectfully on EDG. There's a big wave pushing on the top. We can see Looper's going to go deal with that one. And this is just buying a little bit more time for EDG in there. Happy to wait with this one out. Of course, the Oriana's just going to get stronger and stronger. And this team fight, whenever it happens, will be a massive deal because these teams are stacking up. We're in the 60k mark, so suddenly the gap, despite being, what, 10,000, is becoming a less and less of a problem for both teams. EDG, they have worked their way back into this game off that single mistake, and it could make Samsung White pay. They got just enough catches to delay right there, and they honestly forced Samsung White into a very impatient decision. Like I said, obviously, they're able to secure the Baron, but doing it on top of a Sight Ward when they have such pink ward control and so many sweepers is 
really out of character. So you can definitely see a little bit of fear or second guessing coming in from Samsung White here. However, that is six full items on Imp. Yeah. And when Pawn did resurrect himself in that fight, you saw he came back with full health. Yeah. So Zillion has enough AP that is basically two Imps if they play these fights properly. Very, very big here for Samsung White to make this next one even bigger for EDG to come out on the play. Looking at Nami mostly as saying that his items right now aren't looking at much armor on the side of Samsung White. The most is on Looper, so if he can stay alive, if he can position and be the carry that EDG needs for these fights, it could definitely be a different story. Uh-oh, Koro is in trouble. He's going to get collapsed on. The rest of his team are coming to help, but they are going to be too, too late. The question is, can he hang on long enough? Samsung White coming around the side. EDG coming down the ball, and the left one's there! And EDG rescue crew manages to survive <laughs> and get him away. But for how long? What did that cost? No real cooldowns were used for Samsung White. Koro is a little bit out of the fight. He has to recall, and they also have a bad path back to their inhibitor. This is Samsung White using half of a catch to try and get an inhibitor. Putting on a bit of a stranglehold here. Should be able to take this one down. Ward's all over the place as well. Clear Love is thinking about a flank from behind. There's not sufficient ward control for White right now. Here comes Jarvan. Oh, Madlet's going to get caught there. Clear Love goes in. The wave will pull them, but the top wave is strong. They're going to catch on towards everybody low. Koro, big in between the team. They all back away. Looper having to use that Zonia is very, very low. And they're going to continue piling in. Every summoner blown by this point. It's going to be a big shutdown there as Imp gets a kill. He goes down after in the Retribution kill. Coming from Unstoppable. And the fight has not ended yet. A bubble coming in. And they're going to oh. keep going on to Koro. Finally taking down the tree. They give it a few more cuts. And the inhibitor is in their eyes. You, the only man standing. Can he keep them away? Bay here. I'm not too sure he can. Pawn pushes in towards him. Doesn't quite catch on. The death sentence is done, though. And he's going to get caught out once again. His ultimate backup just in time. You taken so low. Pawn comes back to life. The inhibitor finally goes down. Samson White, they're still this pushing. Is they the chaos. They're trying to go through and they have no AD carry, but they do have a 4 to 2 advantage. 40 minute game right now. 16 to 11 on the Nexus turret. You up. You does not have his ultimate for a few more seconds, but Samsung White sees that window. They're out. A little too chaotic. What a way Ooh. to open the World Championships. That fight. Was Samsung White entering into the chaos? That's not what they're supposed to be doing. They get flanked at the start of it. Imp goes absolutely crazy, but luckily he took Name out with him when he fell down. If that didn't happen, if he wasn't able to land that counter damage, wow. White would have been aced here. It's crazy to think because they won that fight so well. So obviously Shockwave was a little bit lackluster there. They tried the flank initiation, and because Clear Love was still under farm, he wasn't able to pull much up. But here with Imp, look at how on the same page everyone from EDG is in this team fight. However, Samsung White had the same idea. Right. As soon as you see the AD carry, you're gonna go for it. Because they did that nice collapse, they were able to secure this one, and then it was just about keeping the team fight going so Zilling could get an ultimate back up again, and that's ultimately how they took out the inhibitor. And D-Man, like you said, definitely waiting for Imp's flash. You can see it was blown in that fight, keeping him safe and in the right positions. Now six, two, and seven, the full build is out for him. There are two scrying orbs on Samsung White Ooh. right now. And there's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a boo. Oh, Pawn actually pushing in, gets the bomb down. Thank you very much. Back away from this one. So, Super Minions shoving down the bottom lane. EDG, you have a decision oh, to make. Do you fight the Baron, or do you let the Super Minions take your nemesis? They have to go immediately. Otherwise, they're done for. They send Maokai back. He's not very fast at clearing those. They may yet lose an inhibitor turn right. because he can't clear these minions away. Samsung White holds all the cards right now. Doing what he can. Slamming the ground. Tree's trying to make noise. Nobody's there to hear it. The <laughs> turret does get oh, saved. He, held it. he does hold it, and the Baron begins. But this is where EDG has come up big. Can they stop it again? Samsung already reconsidering. Yeah, teleport was available, don't forget, for Koro, so mm -hmm. he does hold on, and this is still very risky yeah. play by EDG. Every time that minion wave hits the turret, it has to be cleared again by Koro. He bought about 30 to 40 seconds when he cleared that last wave, and it's surprisingly, uh, White didn't really take much off of it. They are being a little cautious after what happened last time, and Koro has done a good enough job pushing that wave out that the teleport threat is very real, and White is not willing to do another Baron with 5v5. One of the things we talked about as we watched White is the incredible objective control early. And they're still controlling that, but not as much, it seems, as they oh, want to. No. Back and forth. No, no, Back no, no, and no. forth. 
Do have... not do this, EDG. They're thinking about going to Baron, but White is oh. way ahead of the game right now. That's... There's no defense. This could be inhibitor two. That's inhibitor two gone. There's no way they can react to this one quick enough. That's a simple tower being just destroyed by him. They will again try a flank, though. Watch clear left. He's trying to come down Jarvan. He seems very far ahead of the team right now. Trying to get that oh. Ross Queen out, does not hit it. Looper throws down the red carpet for the team. Koro's in again. The dive buddies go in oh. and they actually change spots this time. Clear loves in all by himself and Imp has free shots as they take down Koro. He jumps in, it's gonna be a double kill. It doesn't look like there'll be any more, but it's eyes on the Nexus and the triple kill dodge. The Quadra possibly on the fountain. He won't go as far and they're gonna go for the Nexus. That's Nexus all they ball. need. Right there, it was such a great catch. They finished off you before he could shockwave and finally, White takes him down. Beautiful game by Samsung White. Showing a bit of weakness in the mid game as they got, I wouldn't say weakness, but over cocky in their strength, which hurt them a little bit. Name on the screen, trying to be a carry for his team, but could not come out here in the first game of groups. He played fantastic, however, throughout the game. But what a fantastic opener we've had oh already. My showing the strengths of both teams. And honestly, it was just hinged on just a couple of team fights that could have swung either way. As you mentioned, if Name had not gone down in that bottom fight, absolutely that would have gone EDG's way. And who knows where that game could have gone. Questionable decisions, maybe from Samsung White. A little bit of nerves creeping into game one, of course. Now that one's out of the way. That's the big, strong game they had to deal with. Can they sweep the group? It seems like they're poised to sweep this group. This is their toughest challenge. However, some small weaknesses arising in Samsung White, and I think a little bit of it was right. seen in that game. They do have a slight issue closing games. That's one of the big reasons they can never seem to defeat their sister team, Samsung Blue. Because even if they can get an early lead, sometimes they have trouble making decisions late in the game. That's the main reason that game stretched for so long. EDG was pushing them into uncomfortable situations. And yeah, like you said, a couple of team fights switched the wrong way. And we have ourselves a massive comeback and a completely different story right now. Wavering back and forth on that Baron, but the man right there, these two, I should say, the early game duo lane from Imp and Mata coming out extravagant. Well, I think Mata will have some words with Imp, honestly, because, you know, <laughs> it was all about that one jump, that one Maybe a few. crazy, crazy leap. And, yeah. you know, he was at 5 0 5, I believe, at the time when leaping in, a little bit overconfident. And this is something yeah. they've talked about coming into this World Championships. They may need to get him in check for the next match. A little bit overconfident is a pretty big <laughs> understatement right there. That was absolute insanity. But it's because he overperformed expectations so heavily yeah. at the start right. of the game. And it, ultimately, it did not decide the game against them. Name was able to get back in the game because of that mistake. But the way they were able to shut him down and make the game really all about you and maybe Clearlove trying to find the right fights is exactly what White wanted to do. It's... EDG didn't get much out of the early game, but a lot of wards swept. And we saw how far behind Clearlove was throughout the game and then trying to initiate. And it was very off with him and Koro. They, one would try to get back out and Koro would be the guy diving in. And it just didn't seem to work out in the fights the way they wanted. And something that none of us really expected coming into this match was the simple fact that Rumble was played in the top lane by Looper. That caught all of us off guard with our stats. Yeah, right off the bat, they've been preparing too, obviously. <laughs> Samsung White wants to win this group. Absolutely. So right now, we're actually going to throw it over to the guys at the analyst desk for a breakdown on Samsung White's win. Thank you very much, guys. And right at the end of the conversation, they're bringing up the picks and bans. Looper playing Rumble, seeing the Zillion, seeing the Nami coming out. Samsung White surprising us a little bit in picks and bans, but they made it work at the end of the game. Monty, what's your take? Well, Rumble was a pick that we saw late in the regionals in Korea from SK Telecom, and it was uh, a game that they beat uh, Najin White Shield with in the finals. And coming into these picks and bans, we really are looking at two very quintessential team compositions for both of these teams. We've got that hyper tank up in the top lane for EDG, that emphasis on AoE and team fighting with the Jarvan in the jungle, and then on the other side of the coin, we have actually an extremely difficult composition to play from Samsung White, because we're dealing with a comp that requires a massive early game lead. Rumble's the champion that you have a lot of early dragon control over, and EDG played well against it. In fact, they uh, kind of baited them into the pit and then rushed mid lane, taking towers, avoiding the Rumble ult whenever possible in the early game. Fortunately, there was a bad fight in the jungle right there. But going into the late game, if you have this composition that we see Samsung White running, 
you need that large lead. You need that big buffer. And not only that, but you need pretty much perfect team fighting because you're very squishy. You're super reliant on the Zillion pick uh, to get the ult off in order to get the resets rolling with Tristana and Kha'Zix. So it requires good Zonia's use from the Rumble as well. And of course, you know, if we look at the pick and ban phase, early Zillion pick, it's a flex pick, although typically white plays it in mid. And then they have that counter pick on support with the Nami. Especially given how the pick and ban phase was going, it was pretty telegraphed that that Zillion was going to end up going mid lane because they have the Rumble that they definitely want to match against Maokai. But then Zillion Tristana would absolutely just lose against Lucian Dresh, so they needed Nami as a kind of pick support, and it worked for them. But didn't you feel that Tristana Nami should also lose to Lucian Thresh? What was your take on the head-to-head -head matchup and how that played out? Yeah, that's something I really want to point out. Um, how EDG started basically at their bot lane side with their jungler, which set their bot lane even farther behind. So they had to leash, and then they played against Imp and Mata, who didn't leash with Tristana and Nami. What ended up happening was the early levels are so crucial in this matchup. They allowed Tristana to just push early and sustain up and just whittle them down, as well as Thresh started with a ward in two potions. So every single point of that matchup where Thresh and Lucian could just abuse Nami Tristana was just not, not allowed to by EDG. And at the same time, those weird jungle starts influenced the jungle as well. And you speak about the bot lane matchup. The matchup of Kha'Zix versus Jarvan with the Zillion passive makes it even more volatile. And we saw Jarvan struggle to get early ganks, and he fell behind in farm, while Kha'Zix was able to pick up some of the scraps from the mid lane. He built up a CS lead and then eventually managed to camp top lane. In another volatile matchup, when you have Rumble, a champion that if he gets really far ahead of whatever opponent he's against, he's going to be able to do just massive amounts of damage. And these champions are so reliant in their team comp that when you get them really far ahead and shut down the main tank for EDG, then the team fights has become that much easier. I want to get back to that bottom lane point, though, Carpo was talking about a little bit, because even though they did start out with the war, they started out with the leash, by the third or fourth wave, we were equal CS. And I know you're talking about the fact that Lucian should be ahead in CS, and it should be a winning matchup, not an equal one. But the point is, we got to a point where the matchup was at least equal, which is reasonable. But it's too late. If it's not too late. A, it's sure, but purely what, opportunity cost. You should fine. already be so far ahead in that matchup. I know what you're talking about being ahead. What I'm going to talk about, though, is the fact that they had an equal lane, and I talked about it in the previous show. What if Name chokes internationally? Name died in 2v2s in a winning lane matchup multiple times, and that is very Let's, unforgivable I mean, for EDG. I don't Let's, think these lanes are equal, though. You get zillion passes. Like, that, it makes a huge... You're always going to not get level 2 first. Level 3 I like first. That point. Actually, Let's, let's move on. One second, one second. I like the point. Also, Mata was a massive reason for that when he picked sure. up the first kill. Let's move on out of the laning phase. Strategically, Samsung White just seemed to have a step ahead of EDG, despite yes. some misplays in team fights. Freak, uh, explain one of the strategic plays that you particularly liked. Okay, so let's pull up the replay, and we're going to start out with it, pause for a little bit. This is basically one of the big reasons Samsung White is a better team than Edward Gaming. So what you see right here is the fact that Name has a free road to split push the bottom lane. Now, we had seen Imp do this with Impunity later on and get down to an inhibitor turret. There's enough wards to see Dandy if you watch that minimap. Not make his split push here completely safely. Instead, he's going to give this up. Samsung White dictates and goes mid lane, and Edward Gaming the entire time is playing second fiddle and trying to like play follow up here. So roll the clip out. We're going to run it fairly flat, uh, fast overall, just to watch the map movements. But Samsung White is actually first here. The mid laner Oriana is actually killing Race instead of showing up to this turret, and so this goes down for free. And this is, again, kind of silly. So finally, the Lucian makes his way in, but Imp's already hitting top lane. Imp is already ready to split push the top lane, push a wave in. EDG just now sees it, just now clears the wards, and so Imp says, oh, now they're coming top lane. I can leave very easily. He's actually able to create the pressure on these turrets. And at the very end of that clip, actually, what happens is you've got the Maokai trying to hold the top lane against this Tristana push, and Rumble's already getting the wave bottom. Tristana had already cleared the wave top. They've already killed the turret mid. So we actually had SSW take all three lanes, something useful in all three lanes, and Edward was like, oh shoot, go mid. Oh shoot, go top. And they're just behind the entire time. Reactionary. And a big part of that, too, is the itemization that we saw in Tristana. If we notice, it went BF Sword into Static Shiv so they, they could get as much lane pressure early. This is a team with Rumble and uh, with the specific composition, with the disengage from Nami, that is very concerned about taking early objectives. And they don't need Infinity Edge crits. They're not looking for those early team fights. They're there to push the waves, to have the split push, and if, they, if necessary, group around the Rumble, Rumble ult a turret, and just 
knock the turret down as fast as possible to get that global gold lead. Let me just quickly interject and, and change the topic a little bit later. We've seen a big team fight following this where Samsung White uh, delay aced Edward Gaming, got themselves a Baron. Then they sort of... Uh, fiddled about for a while. A few misplays from Imp getting caught out, stalled the game out maybe a little longer than it needed to. Do we feel that Edward Gaming, if they had made slightly better decisions in the early game, maybe a different AD carrier, Cogmore, something that could scale more, could they have done better against Samsung White? Because there were some chinks in the Samsung White armor. Freak, I see you excited. So I'm really excited about this because I looked at the post-game screen. Name had the highest damage to champions in the game. He was a 4-4-3 four, four, and three Lucian. We had a 9-2-7 and seven Tristana. We had a big rumble. Name still found a way to deal more damage than every other player in the game. So... He lost, like, there's so many things going against him, yet he still managed to do more damage. So this is a very big factor that if EDG can get out of the early game, something they've even struggled with in China itself, let alone internationally, then they're going to look better. But it's been a repeated road of the early game going week. Some up. final I thoughts from Crumbs. I think the on. biggest factor was the jungle matchup. Like, Jarvan fell so far behind, and he ended up with a, just a welfare build while you have Kha'Zix. <laughs> he's going full damage. Rumble gets, got so far ahead, and Jarvan just not able to do anything. Jarvan is all in. Either you win or you lose really hard. Just the last point, yet again, about the early game. If I agree with Freak. If you play around your AD carry, don't let him leash in a winning matchup and then the other yep. uh, other opposite yep. side doesn't leash, and then all your advantage, you literally throw away it already, and you play from behind level one. Especially when you have a tank top, just leave that tank alone. Even late game, he can just flash in and twist it advance, and that's enough. That's what yep. Malka needs to do. If your AD carry is so good at dealing damage in T fights, then that should be enough. But why would you leash and then just screw it over in bot lane? Big questions that Edward Gaming will need to answer. You can tell that we're particularly excited. <laughs> Anyways, you guys at home, you've been sharing photos with us about how you and your friends do worlds. So let's actually take a look at some of those very quickly. First up from at Good Vibes AU from Australia down under. Hype down under. This is how we worlds. Definitely looking pretty cool. Like your forehead, bro. Next. <laughs> Should there be some familiar faces from LCS fans? That's Fanatics coach Aranea dropping in on Alliance, stealing them strats. And he says, since I saw so many world selfies, this is the Fan Alliance selfie. Hashtag keep smiling, maybe? Hashtag keep smiling. Finally, we have a tweet from Jasm who says, this is how I worlds in medical school. Uh, let's just hope the future doctor is paying attention. I sincerely <laughs> hope so. Yeah. <laughs> for your patience' sake. Uh, thank you guys for sending those in. Remember to tweet your pictures to us on how you world at LOL Esports. Uh, L -O -L -E -sports. Use the hashtag worlds. And if you see big plays, world's big place. We're only just getting warmed up after a quick break. We'll head back onto the rift for an LCS matchup between North America's Team Solo Mid and Europe's SK Gaming. Guys, don't go anywhere. As it turns out, we're going to take a quick look at TSM preparing for their match. You can see uh, we'll transition over to SK Gaming in a moment or two. They've got a tough challenge ahead of them playing with that substitute. All right, guys, we will be back in just a moment. So don't go anywhere. That ad break is coming up before our coverage of the Eventually. 2014 World Championship continues right after this. <laughs> Death Sentence lands on towards him. The wave comes riding through along with the Aqua Prison on Ami. Taken very low. And the back away from this one. Mana bounces it. Mana gets it. It's going to get a miss on that one. Dandy gets himself out quickly with the flash, but the Dark Passage brings it back in range. They're backing out, now they're going to run back on towards him, and he's going to get picked off. It's a double theme. Could it be a triple? Yes, they will. That is a big turnaround, but can they have the damage back on this one? They need to get that mid laner down. Uses the ultimate on himself. He's going to pop back up in a second. Paul is still alive. That is EDG picking up three kills, and they're going to continue piling in. Every summoner blown by this point. It's going to be a big shut down there as Imp gets a kill. He goes down after in the retribution kill. Clear loves in all by himself, and Imp has free shots as they take down Toro. He jumps in. It's going to be a double kill. 